Well, that's got me right pumped up. It's Saturday afternoon at the snooker. The Tempodrome is in fine voice. No need to divert your gaze from table to table anymore. It all happens right here. Four men bidding to become a German master for 2018. And the Eurosport team is complete again. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Neil Foles, Jimmy White and Ronnie O'Sullivan. Ronnie. One of seven men in seven goals to lift this title. We've never had a repeat winner. What are your memories and thoughts of playing snooker and winning at the temper drill? Uh, well, when I won it, I hadn't really won a tournament for about two and a half years, so I was just over the moon just to win any tournament. But to win a tournament here in front of an amazing crowd, you know, um, they love their snooker here in Germany, and, um, you know, it's a great atmosphere. So you couldn't really pick a better venue, really, for, for a snooker tournament. So amazing, amazing place. Yeah, the players this week have talked a lot about it, you know, that it's unique. You, you'd you'd recognise it from any picture. You could only be at the German Masters. Some have enjoyed being able to see everything that's going on, and others have actually... Be, you know, been quite distracted. Judd Trump talked about it last night. He was looking over at Graham Dot making his comeback. I think it's a good thing because you can be playing an opponent that you don't actually like watching and you can watch somebody else's game, you know. <laughs> you, well, you know I, wait, I wait until you miss, so I'll watch someone over there who plays the game that I like watching. So I, I thought it was great. Um, I like yeah. a little bit of distraction. Sometimes it helps you concentrate better. Yeah, absolutely. And when the table is down to one, surely, and I mean this from a healthy point of view, the ego of any sportsman, uh, any sports person to be involved when it's down to one table, everyone's talking about yeah, everyone eyes are on you. Surely that's what it's all about. Absolutely. You know, you're down to the semi-final business end of a tournament. You're getting the applause at the right time for the right shots. Yeah. It's not going, you know, off for different tables. And uh, you've got a chance of winning a major competition. That's what they all practice for. Yeah, Neil, everything changes. Some just slight nuances, you know, two more frames. So from a professional snooker player's point of view, how much does that change? Yeah, and as Jimmy rightfully pointed out, what a job they've done to get this down to one table. Absolutely. You know, table fillers Thomas and Chris here till 5 o'clock this morning, taking out the other four, recovering this one. Those guys don't get enough of a mention. They work very hard. It's going to be great. You know, the extra frame, like you say, um, well, for someone like Graham Dot, for instance, not played on the match table, that's a bit more time for him to settle you know yeah. into it whereas his opponent has played twice on it yeah well listen a lot of people most people watching have real jobs unlike us four and you might have been working all week so let's bring it up to date with what's been going on well listen it's all about yesterday let's talk about that jimmy robertson never been in a ranking quarter final before so he, he did himself justice against mark williams but he's so consistent at, at the moment uh, ding jun we against judd trump well that listen that went off like a steam train and then turned into shredsville didn't it but judd trump got over the line sean murphy well, he battled all the way against Ryan Day. He took the decider. But the big story was Graeme Dart, 4-0 down against Zhao Gadong, comes back to win 5-4. Ronnie, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you did that the year that you won the title here. That was the last time we could see that. Yeah, I mean, it's just the way the, the game goes, doesn't it? You know, standard so high now. If the, the guy gets off to a fly, you know, sometimes you have got to do a lot wrong to be 4-0 down. And... Um, so, yeah, I mean, he must be feeling great to come back from that. And, um, but I think he might struggle today because, obviously, he's played on the outside tables. They play a lot slower. Yeah. This is going to be a lot quicker. So if I was a betting man, I'd get down to bookies and probably lump on Murphy because of that. Not yeah. because he's a better player, um, just because of the conditions might kind of catch him out a little bit. Yeah, well, listen, that's exactly what we're going to talk about as soon as we come back from this break. Two Anglo-Celtic battles in the semi-finals of the 2018 German Masters. Our full attention is on Dot versus Murphy when we return. Two former world champions bidding for a place in that final tomorrow. The first four frames are just minutes away. Genuinely freezing today in Berlin. You pack your thermals as well as your queue when you come to play in the German Masters, but the gloves are off. Semi-final day at the Temperdrome. And tonight, Mark Williams takes on Judd Trump but this afternoon. Graeme Da against Sean Murphy. Snowing here and snowing at the ski jumping today. You'd hope so. It would be a bit sore, wouldn't it? 3 p.m. Eurosport 2. Uh, the, one of the last events before the big one, of course. And Eurosport is there for it all, leading the way with our Winter Olympics coverage from February the 9th all the way through to the 25th. So here we are, back in the practice area, which is actually in the main arena for anyone watching for the first time. And we see a guy who, of course, is a former world champion, and Greg Dockway, uh, Graham Dot, one of the quiet men of snooker, I think it's fair to say, but it shouldn't be mistaken for rudeness. He's such a lovely guy. Yeah, he's such a ten tenacious player. You know, he's been in three world finals, and uh, I was talking to him 
and he said about his form is in and out and I've got to agree with what Ronnie just said outside there that he's not played a match on the match table you know that is a massive advantage for Murphy mm. I was just talking to Graham he seems very very relaxed the last time he reached the last eight let alone the last four was here two years mm. ago big week for him I think he's fully aware that this is different he reckon he know I know that in 2016 when he got the semis lost to Martin Gould you know he played on the match table the first time then so he's hoping to learn from experience and adapt quicker you know look, look at these scores as well 5-3 5-4 5-4 he must be feeling a little invincible coming from 4-0 down let's hear from Graham Dutt now well, Graham, first of all, congratulations on making the semi-finals. You've certainly earned your spot in the last four here at the Temple Drome. 3-0 down to Barry Hawkins, 4-0 down to Zhao Gudong. You must be delighted with the manner in which you've made it here. Yeah, the, the first round against Barry, I played particularly well. Um, I was really happy with the way I played there. Second match, I lost a bit of concentration at 4-1 up. But um, I never played that well last night, and, and I'll need to play better. That's why I'm inside early for the practice. When you were 4 nil down, were you kind of resigned to defeat and just sort of relaxed, or did you still think, well, if I just hang on in there, as I always do, I can turn it around? Yeah, I never actually ever feel that I'm beat. I always feel I've got some sort of chance and if I could just click and play well, but I was surprised that I managed to win without it clicking, really. I never actually played that well, but... But Zal kind of struggled to get over the line, so I was just glad to get over it myself. I think you only made one round of 16 last season when you qualified for the Crucible, but this season's been a lot more consistent. Three last 16s, and of course now you've got a semi-final to look forward to. What's been the difference during this campaign, do you think? Uh, at the end of last year, I'd done a lot of work with, with Chris Henry, <clears throat> and it kind of changed my game a bit because um, I was getting a bit disillusioned with my age and everything as well, and I was thinking that I'm, I might be finished. So it was either go and do something or, or give up. So um, I went to see Chris and, and it's working. It's kind of rejuvenated me. I'm hungry to play again and I'm practising as well, which I wasn't doing for a couple of years. We're down to the one-table situation now, of course, and you've been to the semis before. What's the atmosphere going to be like out there now that all 2,000-plus spectators are going to be looking at you and Sean Murphy? That's oh, fantastic. I mean, it's where you want to play. Um, I remember a couple of years ago, it, it was my first time on that table and I struggled to adapt to it, so I'll need to adapt quicker today and, um, and try and give Sean a game. Good luck, enjoy it. Cheers, thanks. Really interesting to hear that, Ronnie, another player who's reached the big 4-0 and he uses the word being disillusioned. We heard the same from Mark Williams and getting back to practice and we heard the same from Mark Williams as well. It, it's a game you can't cheat, can you? You've got to put the work in, you've got to love it. Well, you can if you've got a lot of ability. You can get away with doing a lot less, but if you have to work harder at the game, which I would imagine Graham would probably come under that banner, he, he obviously needs to put the hours in and um, probably the game comes a little bit more easy to Mark Williams so he could probably get away with a little bit less. But... Um, I think a lot of people, snooker players practice out of guilt. Um, I don't think you actually need to play that much. You play so many tournaments and matches. I mean, mm. it's like riding a bike sometimes, you know. Everyone knows how to do it. You just Some people do it better than others. Yeah, and this man's been doing it very well this season. <coughs> he's got the champion of champions, of course. He's been in three finals, but he made the point to us, Neil. He said, well, finals are finals. I still came second. I want the trophies this season and the mantelpiece. Yeah, and the other thing about that is that, of course, you know, you get to a final, you get a lot of ranking points, a lot of money, but the, everything's top-heavy now, so you've got to win the tournaments to get bigger prize money and a bigger ranking. Well, he's two wins away from it. Let's hear from Sean Murphy. Sean, congratulations on another semi-final here at the Temple Drome. It was a tough one, though, against Ryan Day. You must be relieved to have got over the line. Oh, I mean, relieved's definitely the word I'd use. Uh, it wasn't a great match by any stretch, and... Part of me feels a bit sorry for those that had to endure it on the streaming services, all the people that had paid money to come here and watch. But, you know, they had a great night. There were some fantastic matches. And, of course, we provided decent drama to the end. And in the end, I was very relieved to, to get over the line. Overall, though, you must be delighted with the way you've played this week because, you know, you've been scoring heavily, which you normally do. Your tactical stuff has been good as well. And that tremendous clearance, which made the difference against Mark Joyce when it might have been 2 all, you led 3-1, went on to win comfortably. Yeah, I think, um, you know, some really good signs that I don't have a great track record of, of winning matches or tournaments when I don't play my absolute best. You know, historically, I've had to score people off the table. Um, whereas I've been pretty consistent this year and my scoring hasn't been good, but my B game has been really strong as well. And, you know, that, that, that's very exciting for Team Murphy. Um, that, that, that means that there could be some good things ahead because it's, you know, to win when you don't play your best is, is, is what it's about in sport. What about Graham, though, your opponent's day? He's tenacious, isn't he? He's 3-0 down against Hawkins, 4-0 down against Xiao Gadong, but he just keeps coming and coming. 
Well, it's funny, you know, Ryan and I were actually, you know, chatting about it during the game last night because as he was making his comeback, the crowd was starting to charge and we took a break just to let them have their moment for a minute. And I was saying, you know, there's only one winner of that match at 4-1. It looked like, you know, uh, Gadong just couldn't win. It, it, it looked like Graham was just going to keep coming for him and coming for him. And uh, in the end, it proved so. He's a tough cookie. It's another big battle today. Good luck. Thank you. Cheers. Well, I can't wait, and it is a really simple question, but it intrigues me. The only person who hasn't won a world title is the bookie's favourite. Yeah, Unbelievable. And, John, forget they say, who's your favourite out of the four left? Well, look, I mean, the point is, uh, you know, Judd is the youngest player. He's the, uh, still the up-and-coming player, but he hasn't won anything, you know, with the world title, which is an interesting point, you know. I guess the form player, you could say at the moment, Mark Williams, he's won a ranking event quite recently, and he's, he's in there with a chance of winning it again. He's won it before as well. Yeah, none of us are sure, but that's one for Mark Williams, a, a, a tentative one. Um, I'd probably just go go with Trump, really, to win this tournament now. OK, one with Trump. Yeah, definitely Trump. You're going to go for Trump? Definitely. The way he played against Ben Woolison, I thought he was superb. If he can produce that game, no-one's played to that standard for me in this tournament yet. Yeah. OK, I go for Sean Murphy, so it's probably going to be Graham Dalt wins it. That's probably <laughs> what's going to happen. It's his chance to prove <laughs> us all wrong right now. Your commentator uh, will be Joe Johnson uh, alongside Philip Studd. But first of all, what we've got to do properly, don't we, in semi-finals day. So let's get out there to our MC, Ralph Kalb. Hier ist Berlin, hier ist das Tempodrom. Herzlich willkommen zum ersten Halbfinale des German Masters 2018.